there, we are Claire and Nick Butcher and we've been together for over 20 years. We used to live in Wiltshire in the UK, with Nick having a background in bathroom sales and myself in hospitality and catering. In 2020, we decided to leave the daily grind to start a new life in France. Eventually, we ended up buying this. It's not officially a chateau, even though the village locals call it one. However, it is just as large and equally as much hard work as a chateau. With a horde of original features and the building having been unoccupied for many years, we are slowly breathing life back into her, whilst frequently still finding the many treasures she holds. Join us on our journey with our dogs, Flora and Merlo, as we renovate our Maison de Maitre. Hi everyone and happy Sunday. We did have a week off last week and there was a good reason. It was Nick's 50th birthday. Um, I decided to kind of go all out and give him a huge surprise along with the help of some of our friends. It was our first week off in 109 episodes of our channel. Um, and here's how the week panned out. It started with the arrival of our friend Jack. And Jack was a little bit of a decoy for what was going to happen over the next week. Here we go. Just a couple of little jobs today. Firstly, I'm gonna fit that handrail to get down the steps into the pool. Um, and then we can see a little urn there. That, going on top of that one. And I've got another one to go on top of there. So yeah, crack on. Well, in next job is to get the urns bedded in on top of the columns. There, so I've got a lime and sand mixture. I'm just mixing together, and uh, yeah, get those on. There we have it. A couple of planters ready for Claire to do her thing. Well, here it is. Another delivery. Yay. Well, it's about quarter to six on Monday evening. It's been a hot day. I've been out, done some food shopping, ordered some more aggregates that arrived this afternoon. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of cleaning and we are ready to welcome a guest. This guest is our friend Jack. Now, Jack used to work for me when I had the pub and he was a chef there. Many people will laugh as it's an inside joke, as he's not really a chef, he's a cook. Um, <laughs> but no, he's a chef, really. <laughs> Jack is very much like a 
golden retriever. Friendly, loyal, and it always seems to gravitate back to you. So yeah, we're just waiting for his arrival. Remember she... <laughs> Flora. So Jack arrived, he had a couple of days of settling in and then on Thursday morning I came out with one of the first surprises to Nick. Now, we're going on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> so today I was going to let you start work and then give you this. But I thought I'd tell you before you started work. So <laughs> <laughs> today we are going on holiday. I'm on holiday. <laughs> Not me. You're house sitting and we're going on the plane. No. No. Oh. Today. You're dog sitting and house sitting. No, 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 no. Today, you need to leave here at about two o'clock in my car to go and pick up Martin from La Rochelle Airport. Ah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> this bag is filled with new clothes for you and it is also filled with a booking form for a hotel that I have booked you and Martin for overnight in La Rochelle to go on a night out. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Martin will arrive today at 4.15 and he will be leaving here on Friday next week. Ah, cool. Ooh, more hands <laughs> to do work. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all right? What a surprise. <laughs> So, as part of his board and lodging deal, Jack's offered to do a bit of help. So, he's going to just move that pile of cement from there to there. Just get it out of the way a bit, tidy up. I'm known for wanting a tidy place, aren't I? Yeah. So, that cat's out the bag. <laughs> I think he did seem quite genuinely surprised. The problem I've got now is that I'm having to deep clean my car out because, guess whose car's broken? Nick's. Um, yeah, we were out in it yesterday with Jack and it started making this really horrible metal creaking noise. Um, I think it's got something to do with the brakes and how there isn't one on the back right hand side so his car's pretty much out of action now and this throws a real real spanner in the works for me this this couldn't have happened at like a worse time and you'll you'll see why <laughs> i also kind of didn't want to be spending my day cleaning this car um but it's kind of non-avoidable because it is absolutely covered in swallow shit. Look at that, all of the back of it. And all the way down the front. Now it's not been there for that long, it's only been underneath the garage for probably about four days, but yeah, look at that. That ain't fun. So a little job I'm going to get done this morning with Jack's help um, is to fit. I've got some more of these border stones here that I'm going to do a row along that line to sort of get that area separate from where the grass is going to be. So 
where we previously have just put all this hardcore down um, we need to dig that down a bit to get the right height to then make a mix of concrete and get those stones put in so quite a simple job for Jack's first real bit of work I think that's just ease him in gently he's not used to all this manual labour bless him and he's quite a delicate flower so yeah we don't want to overwork the guy So leaving Jack to do whatever he's doing down there, digging the trench and I've come over here where I'm just going to now fit a couple more of these slabs along here. They're the quite fiddly ones because they're only cutting for all these pool bits and pieces so um, yeah I'm going to fit another one now. There you go, just a couple down over there. So let's go and see how Jack's getting on. Oh. Well, well done Jack, look at this. There we go, lovely straight line. Looks good, looks good height wise. Maybe down a little at that end there because he just left all the rubble in the trench. But yeah. Dig it out in a minute when yeah. we get there because it's lower anyway. So. All right, we'll so you weren't really ready to show me what you've done. It's ready. Okay. I uh, have right, eight shovel loads of that, eight, eight. Just thought I'd take this opportunity in case there's any sugar mummies out there. No. <laughs> Jack's on the market and he's a chef. I am a chef. I As you chef. can tell, he likes his food. And beer. Bought and paid for. So if there's any sugar mummies out there, drop us a line. We can get you in contact. Well, as predicted, didn't take too long. Uh, so that will just frame off that little area and allow us to go up to it when we lay the artificial grass here. So thank you very much, Jack. No dramas. Just going to clean up all the tools now because I do that, despite what you may have heard, I do that. Now, doesn't that car look really, really clean? So his instructions are he is to bring the car back in one piece and he is to bring the car back with a full fuel tank. Now we're just 
time for the fun to really begin. And we've been planning this for months. Hey! <laughs> Last one off the plane as normal. Thought we hadn't bothered getting on! <laughs> well, this was an unexpected trip to La Rochelle, but um, well, we're taking full advantage of the sunshine. I've left Martin over there with my beer, he's waving hello. Hello, Martin. And uh, yeah, well, we've got a river dockside view of um, these old sailing boats that are going around. It's all very pleasant. So last night we finally finished making up five bedrooms, uh, did all of the watering, did everything, finished about 11 o'clock, had a, had a beer and a glass of wine, got a bit of an early night and um, there's something that I really really didn't want to do that I've just done. So the van needed to come in to have an emissions test and I drove the van all the way from the house to the admission centre and we are now here having breakfast while the van gets an emissions test. So I'm here with my dear friend Fufu and we have the world's smallest cup of coffee, a croissant each, a lovely view of a roundabout and the CT testing centre. I would have liked to have not bought the van for a CT test. However, Nick booked it and obviously I didn't tell him that he was going away because it was a surprise. And yeah, I had to walk in there and kind of speak French and look like a bit of a dick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey ho, hopefully the van will pass. <laughs> Back home, past the CT test or whatever it's called, and I've even managed to reverse it into the barn. Check my bad self out. <laughs> In a moment, we have the arrival of Nick and Martin back from La Rochelle. Little does my husband know, there will be another surprise turning up in maybe an hour or two. Here they are. Yeah, you need to go get the gate. <laughs> Surprise! I'd have lost the gate if I'd known. <laughs> So you're going to have to excuse the noise. I'm currently in my car and I'm now on the way to the airport to pick up four more of our friends. Um, John and Sue arrived this morning, uh, sorry, John and Sue arrived this afternoon even. It's been a bit of a long day, especially with taking the van for that thing this morning. Anyway, 
John's still here, Martin's here, Jack's here, and now I'm on the way to La Rochelle Airport. It's 10 o'clock at night. Sun, sun's still fairly up, you know, it's getting that like twilight colour. Um, yeah, and I'm off to pick up uh, the final four. I'm off to pick up Mel, uh, Colin, uh, Tony, and um, Mr. Bacon. And I'm very, very excited. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, Nick knows that I've gone somewhere because I left and I said, I'm just going to pick something up. I think he may have suspected something because I made sure that I brought a bag of beer for everyone in the car on the way back from the airport. It's just how I roll. Um, it's going to be a bit of a squeeze, but yeah, I feel, I feel a little bit emotional about this one as well. Um, yeah, a bit fluffy. Ooh, worried I'm going to have a little cry. Anyway, I've, uh, I've managed to sort some things today, which I'm really pleased about. One of them is the problem with the car. Now, I think I explained the other day, there's been a huge problem with Nick's car. It's going to go into the garage and have a bit of a review on Saturday. But today I overcame a huge hurdle and for the next few days while everyone's here I've actually managed to book a hire car which has been a bit of a rush because obviously Nick's car was unexpected. So I've covered that, I've got food in for tomorrow, all of the rooms are ready, everything's ready to go, everyone's fed and watered so far, just got this last airport pickup to do. <laughs> right, I'm going to keep driving, got about half an hour to go, flight's a little delayed, focus. So I've made it, with half an hour to spare. They've given her too much gin on the plane. <laughs> so while I was collecting everybody from the airport, Martin, John, Sue and Jack were all under strict instructions to try and keep Nick up as late as possible for the arrival of everyone coming back from the airport. They all did a fantastic job. Uh, Nick thought for some reason that I'd gone to my mother's house to go and pick up a cake. I don't know why. <laughs> but I got back quite late and he'd had a couple of drinks. Um, here's how it went. I think from Nick's language he was a little bit overwhelmed. Anyway, we went on to have a lovely, fairly late evening with a few more drinks, and the following day we had a day around the pool with a barbecue.
day two was all about cracking the safe, having a little bit of a cognac tour and a tasting, and finally going out for dinner in our local village square. Well, a year ago, this man helped us get this to where it is now, and it's still here. I've been out this morning to a brico shop, well, why not, and uh, bought some metal cutting discs, and he's just about to see if he can gain entry into the safe. So uh, by the time you're watching this, I could be, be a multi-millionaire and have jetted off somewhere. Okay. Or not. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> like the Black Hole of Calcutta. <laughs> <laughs> Go and have a look. You need a torch. Okay, turn that bit on. I think that's an empty box. Yeah, that's empty. We're in. Empty. Back to plan A. Day three came, it was Sunday, and it was Mr Butcher's actual 50th birthday. So we started off by treating everyone to a quick walk around our local village, Brocant. We then headed towards Sant, and we went to a wonderful restaurant for lunch called La Terrasse. After that, we headed over to Cognac, and we went to the top of the Martel Cognac building, for drinks at the Martel Indigo Bar, followed by a swift trip home and a few games of beer pong, which can also be wine pong and can also involve random shots of Jägermeister. Mm, dangerous. Oh, 
car then. Go on, go on, and bite, and chew. How is it? It's lovely though, isn't it? You're on fire. Well, they help me, but then I'm nagging. Day four, bit of a late start to the day. There could have been a few sore heads that morning. So it was a pool day um, and some work actually got done. The other thing that happened was me and Jack for dinner, we made a huge paella. You know me, I'm quite happy to do physical work. But if I've got some people here <laughs> and they're happy to, I've got that Jack and Mike on the uh, shoveling and Colin and uh, John are barrowing sand round to beside the pool. We're going to just use it to level off before we attempt to fit the fake turf down. So, uh, yeah, that's what we'll be getting on with. Well, we've measured over there. You know, have a go at cutting the carpet grass and see if we can get a bit down today. Whee!
Well, we just dropped it back down again, so after re-leveling the sand, and it uh, seems to have gone down really well. How's it going out there, guys? Underneath the rolly. Look at this. Show, show us what we're having. Oh, oh paella. Oh. Yeah, no. So they, they, they did have some fish in today then? Yeah, <laughs> there's loads. Wow. Wee wah, woo wah. <laughs> and over the food. <laughs> Enjoying that, Martin? Yeah. Yeah. Just the last bits, that's all he's having there. Day five, and sadly, it was time to say goodbye to Tony, who ended up catching a train from Paris back over to the UK. In the meantime, there was still a few sore heads. Not really a pattern here. Uh, so it was time to take everybody to the all-you-can-eat buffet, followed by some drinks down by the river at a place called Tyborg, uh, finishing up with some round-the-pool time um, and cheese and meat for dinner. Day six was a beach day and it was time to take everyone to our favourite beach at saint palais sous mer and go for lunch at Shea Bob and have some time on the beach. When we did get there, it was absolutely tanking it down with rain, but during lunch, all the clouds burned away and it was beautiful sunshine. I think a few people got a little burned as well. Day seven, and it was another day around the pool. Unfortunately, today was the day that Mike, Colin and Mel went home. There was some grass laying around the pool in the afternoon. Me and Jack cooked eight kilos of mussels in a more marinara sauce. And then I sadly had to drive them back to the airport.
No. Come round. Okay. Uh, whoa. Man, this is one of my Ready? Uh, can I have two seconds? Uh, go, Blue. Five minutes. There we go. <laughs> So this is where I'm going to conclude this week's episode. We have had a wonderful week with all of our friends. A big thank you to everyone who made it over. It's been really, really special. We've both really appreciated it. And to our friends who couldn't make it, we hope to see you again on another occasion. Um, there's no wine of the week this week, and there's a good reason. My liver has done crossfit all week with what we've been drinking uh, however i do have a, a cup of tea uh the birthday boy for the week is currently outside doing some jobs we still have a couple of friends here um so yeah wow um i hope you've enjoyed watching nick's birthday week and surprise as much as we've enjoyed it too um if you have enjoyed watching, please click the like button, click the thumbs up. Um, it does help us. And if you've not already subscribed, please consider doing so. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Or you can find out a bit more on our website at www.theexpatbutchers.com. And we will see you next Sunday. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>